Hey guys, I'm Vakas Hassan. Welcome back to the Ultimate Academy. This is the third video in the series where I'm doing a live demo on IELTS speaking. We did a live demo of part one, then part two, and in this video, we will be doing a live demo of how do you approach part three question in the IELTS speaking to get a nine band. By the way, this is from my most popular online course, Ultimate Guide to Hacking IELTS, link to which you can find in the description. But without further ado, let's jump into the video. So in part three, you will be doing exactly what you've done in part one and two, which is using the same fundamental strategies that we discussed, which is that for every question, pretty much have in mind that you're going to answer for 30 seconds. This is more like on the higher side of 30 seconds. So just don't answer in two lines, go for 30 seconds to 60 seconds, let's say. But what is more important? simple over complex. The structure is what matters. Step by step, using bullet points as simple as possible. Also, fluency does not mean fast. So how do we stay fluent? We think first and we speak. Then we tell, we don't speak to ourselves, which is that every opinion you have, every thought you have, it is valuable. Have that mindset in you. You are sitting in front of Imagine that you're sitting in front of this large audience. This is not the examiner who is there to judge you. Instead, there is a large audience who is there to listen to you. So everything you'll be saying about your thoughts about topic X, your position about topic Y, it is of value. So tell it with the natural pauses like you want the other person to understand. And lastly, bring in your energy, your tonality, your enthusiasm in it. It will travel a long way. So the format is very similar to what we did in part one and part two live demos. I have about four questions here in front of me, which I'll be using as reference question. I have not written the answers. So the answers are not scripted. I will be using the techniques that I'm teaching you in these video lessons and I'll be answering it on the spot. And that's where you will see how to apply it. And also we'll deconstruct it afterwards and see how, what I used, how I used it. Let's get into it. My first question is, what do you value and not value in other people? So the technique here we're going to use is that whenever you have two sides of a coin, okay? So value and not value, good and bad, agree or disagree. What you're going to do in part three, you're always going to speak two points about first and two points about the second. So what do you value? Two things. And what do you not value? Two things. Of course, if that seems too much, you can also just answer one and one for each. One thing you value, one thing you do not value. But do it in a structured manner. So this is what I value. However, this is what I not value. So always have two sides, very clear sides in your answer. So let's say this is my answer. There are two things I value in other people. The first is their honesty. I really connect with people who are honest about their affairs, about their perspectives, about their thoughts, about their feedback with me because I can trust them. And the second thing I value in people is their ambition. If people are ambitious, I find I find myself easier to connect with them because I feel that we are on the same page. However, there are two things that I don't value in other people. One is the opposite of honesty, dishonesty because if I can't trust them, I don't know the plans I'm making with them. Are they going to live up to their side? Uh, can I do business with them? So on and so forth. And the other thing I do not value in people is laziness. I think that life is too short and we have only this much time to express ourselves and really run towards our dreams, our goals. And people who are wasting a lot of their time just not doing much, maybe using escaping methodologies like binge watching a lot of content or smoking or playing cards and so on, I usually not value these qualities in other people. So let's deconstruct it. What happened? Same. Two reasons what I value, two I do not value, but both of them are very well structured. First and second what I value, first and second what I don't value, and then there's a transition in the middle. This is the only thing I want you to take if you forget every other thing for part three. It is very structured. Let's get into next question. Next question is, how can we reduce the harms of social media? 
how do you answer such questions so there's one side right how can you deduce and you can say one thing you can say 10 things but always say two things usually if you're feeling good about the question say three things why because for your mind as well as well as for the listener's mind if you have already structured it in a way there are a couple of ways we can reduce the harms of social media if you've already structured it the listener's mind is like sitting back relaxed and just listening to your answer taking it in what most people do is that they just go on and they start speaking oh we can reduce this harm as well like this we can reduce this harm like this this and this and and the listener's mind the examiner's mind is like okay this person can end any time so half of his or her con concentration is on your answer and the half is on the next question that he or she has to ask so again very simply social media has a lot of harms i think there are two ways we can reduce the harms of social media the first is we should have parental controls so kids especially who are under their teens so let's say 12 and less parents should have an oversight of what kind of content they're watching because in today's world there is no end to the dark content to adult content to too much of hardcore content out there and that can really be sticky in the minds of young children and as they grow older that content can develop some fears in them that will reflect in their personalities the other harm we can reduce of social media is the harm of over watching or which is usually called binge watching i was looking at a study and in today's generation millennials and gen z are spending about 8 to 10 hours of their waking hours on the social media i think mobiles should come up with the feature where the social media is only allowed for let's say 60 minutes a day and once you turn on that feature the social media will automatically stop after that time these are the two ways i think we can reduce the harms of social media okay let's deconstruct what did we do here what we did was first we created this closed loop that we are going to speak about two reasons okay second we spoke about each reason in a very well structured manner within its bracket so when we were speaking about the first one the examiner knew that this person will not just stop here there will be a second reason that is coming after this and then once we told about the two in a very well structured manner within itself we then had a closing line these are the two harms or the two ways we can reduce the harms of social media again i want to reiterate this thing that in the job interview your intellect matters your knowledge matters in ielts it does not how you say it matters what you say does not matter so you can just be making this up a great example of that is how i made up that i was looking at a research and millennial or gen z are spending six to eight hours uh, on the social media today there is no such study that i watched it's all made up because this is the freedom i feel in ielts speaking that you can just say whatever you want to say there is there's no end to what you want to say you just have to say it in a structured manner and secondly whenever you say something like that according to a study that i watch or there was a research i was looking at it creates an authority as well that this person is well read because the examiner is not going to go back and cross reference whether you are speaking about the real study or not moving on third question how has internet changed the way we work i think internet has changed a lot of ways we work but there are two main things that come into my head when i think about it first is the idea of online meetings today i attend almost two to three hours of meetings every day online this was unheard of even two years ago today with zoom calls with whatsapp video calls with microsoft teams most of my work the collaboration that is happening with my teammates is happening on the online meetings i think there is no end to it it's just going to keep going more in this direction and we're going to keep working more from remote uh, areas the second way the internet has changed is that today we can work in global teams because internet has created such connectivity that we are able to interact with people from different races in different cities in different countries and work real time with them 
So for example, I am a content creator and my video editors for that matter are in different cities in a different country. My digital marketers are in different cities, different countries. My graphic designers are in different cities, different countries. Because with the internet, what I've realized is that we are connecting with people based on how we think, how we look at the world, what our values are instead of our geography, whether we are located in the same city or not. So these are the two ways I think internet has changed. It has given rise to online meetings and it has given rise to global, multiracial, multicultural, multi-country teams. Very simple. I don't have to deconstruct this for you guys. Very simple. I've used whatever we've been learning so far and answered in a very structured manner. And lastly, let's take a different one. Is climate change doing the most harm in today's world? So I've kept this question as well because I want to answer that you don't always have to say two reasons to do this, three ways to do that. That is all that works best when you have questions like what do you value and not value? How can you reduce harm? There are many reasons to give. How has internet changed the way? A few ways. Let's say if the question is, is climate change the most harm? Then you can answer very simply. There are many harms in the world, but I really do think that climate change is doing most harm to the world. For us as a species, oxygen and optimum temperature is very important to survive. But the more and more we are going into climate change, we are realizing that the amount of carbon dioxide is increasing and oxygen producing uh, plants, forests, trees are being cut down. That can actually have devastating effects for human civilization. As well as, as the global temperature is increasing, we are realizing that ice caps are melting and there are floods and tsunamis and water level rising, all these kind of issues that are happening as well that are making a lot of coastal cities or cities and villages that are near the rivers around the world suffer a lot of damage. So I think that the global impact of climate change is more than any other harm in the world. The technique I want you guys to realize here is that climate change or any other question Whatever the question is, for example, do you think online learning is a better way to learn education? Is climate change doing the most harm? Whatever the question usually is, it's always easier to take the side of the question. So for example, if online education is the best way of learning, even if you think that it's not, usually if you say, yes, I think online learning is the best way of learning, then you can quickly find two reasons why online learning is better. Similarly, if cli is climate change the biggest harm? If I have to spend some time comparing all the other dangers, terrorism is a danger, uh, nuclear war is a danger, uh, I don't know, cryptocurrency is a danger, uh, racial discrimination is a danger. If I start thinking about all these, the mind will have so much confusion in it and not be able to think. You won't be able to think on the spot. So whatever the question is, is climate change the most important harm in today's world? Yes, climate change is most important harm. Easy for the mind. Okay, you have to make sure that your mind is easy, relax, because once you have given it the information, okay, yes, climate change is the easier, then you can start thinking about two ways that climate change is affecting the world or few reasons that come into your head, how it is affecting the world. It is as simple as that. But again, if you don't do that and you start thinking about the other dangers as well, it just becomes too confusing in the head. With that, we've come to the end of our three parts on IELTS speaking live demos, part one, two, and three. If you have found this valuable and you practice what I've taught you, you'll get a nine ban in IELTS speaking. By the way, these videos are, as I said before, from my online course, Ultimate Guide to Hacking IELTS, in which we have all four modules and a lot of lessons and a lot of amazing hacks for reading, listening, writing, and speaking. You can find the link to the course in the description below. Also, subscribe to the Ultimate Academy YouTube channel because I am going to keep coming up with amazing videos on IELTS, speaking, communication, so on, and my other content creators as well on other areas of your life that you can ramp up. So subscribe to our channel, Ultimate Academy. I'll see you in the next video.